What? Melissa? What happened? Is that a paw I see on you? No. Actually, that is not Melissa. That's Melissa. What? Two of them? Twins? Here is the little uh, foot pedal I made for Sandra. So she can uh, stop it and change gears because without it her foot is fully extended. So I had to put something on there so she could stop it better. But yeah, that's Melissa. Well, who is this over here? Hey, you. Who are you? This is Melissa's sister, Abigail. I think you heard me talking about her when I was trying to fix the clutch and brake on Melissa. This is her twin. All right, I'm going to set this camera up because I'm going to try to get this one running today. It did run. I had the engine out and I had it running on the bench and then I put it in and then I ran a little bit and then it doesn't want to stay running. So I'm going to figure this out and hook up a throttle cable and all that good stuff and hopefully we'll see this being this thing uh, running today. Alright? Pause. Okay. We'll take the hood off here. Oh, that comes off real easy. So, this is a uh, Tecumseh 5 horse. It actually is a tiller motor. Um, This muffler, I'm going to replace that with a straight pipe like I did with Melissa because it's just going to turn all this black here. We don't want that. But as I was saying, this is a tiller motor that has, look at that, an extra pulley on it. I heard these engines are kind of pricey. Someone told me they're kind of pricey, and this was a good find. I paid, I think, 20 or 25 bucks for this. So, good deal, and it did run. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some gas in it and give her, a, give her a, or two, see what happens. I don't know. Maybe I'll check the spark first. Hey everybody, here's something I forgot. I forgot about this. This is the coolest thing. I've never seen this before until I got this engine that had this spark plug in it. Check this out. This is awesome. This is going to show you if you got spark or not. You see that? How cool is that? That is just awesome. All spark plugs should have that to show you you have spark. So anyway, I'm going to take off this muffler here. So be back to you in a few. I'm going to take this muffler off now. Say, uh, you know, I got one of these socket sets, right, um, what the hell is this? I got this little Stanley socket set, and, uh, 
it came with this socket here. Get it in the camera for you here. It came with the socket here. And uh, I was like, well, what the hell? It's like, I mean, like, I'm like, what the hell is this for? I had no idea what this was for. And uh, I don't know how I figured it out, but you know what that's for? It's for bits like these, screwdriver bits and star bits and Allen head bits. So, it's the coolest thing. I use this a lot, actually, now that I know what it's for, because, like, I cannot get a regular size screwdriver between that screw and the grill. However, now I can. That's a cool little invention there. I had no idea what that was for. So, just one day, I figured it out. So we're going to take this off now. some other stuff off to get down in there. Oh yeah, that's my homemade air filter. Don't laugh, it works. I don't have the real thing. But if it keeps dirt and crap out of the carburetor and from going into your engine, who cares? It works. do is paint it and you'd never even know it. That's done. I saved this muffler for something else. That's a cool little muffler. On this air filter, it's so easy, you just pop the lid off. All it is is like a, what, it, what was this, a cottage cheese. Just pop the lid off, put a, um, I don't remember what I have in here. Some kind of, I don't remember. Anyway, I have some kind of filament in there. So, it works. Now, I'm not even going to put that pipe on there. Try to get this thing going first before that. Um, and I actually have to look at Melissa and figure out how to hook this uh, cable up. Good. See, this thing has a separate choke. <laughs> separate choke on this tractor. I someone must have put that on there. No. Looks like
think I just take that off. Yeah. And yeah, I do have. Well, it's. I don't know if it's the original engine for this or not. But I do have a six horse that came with this tractor. It needs a new piston and connecting rod. It was all tore apart when I got it in a box, you know, hit. but the uh, blower housings claims it's a seven horse, so uh, I, I'm kind of thinking it might have, might be a replacement engine, uh, that actually is not a seven horse, but it might, it's probably a shroud from a seven horse. Yeah, I know, usually I have my tools laid out for you guys and showing you, show you what tools you need. Well, I don't even know what tools I need. Okay, and I couldn't get the, uh, couldn't get a socket down in between there, so, well, again. Using this again. Handy, just so handy, so handy. If you get, if you guys don't have one of these, get one. I'm serious about that. It's, it's awesome. Works great. I may need, you know what, this cable isn't long enough. What? I don't believe it. What? This might work.
I'm just trying to figure something out here. You know, that might work. All right. I'm going to fang dangle something up, redneck this thing up. That cable's really not long enough. But it is working. I can get this to work. See. That's right. It's a zip tie. Hugh Billy modified. And if it works, great. If not, well, you know, try again. Like it, it looks like it may work. All right. I know some of you are interested in this loader part of this tractor. I'll get to that. That's what makes this tractor a little special. And that's why I bought it. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin, and I went all the way to Ohio to get this thing. Because when I saw it, I fell in love with it. I had to have it. All right, we're gonna put some gas in here. We're gonna we're gonna try to fire this thing up. Let's see what happens. Actually, maybe I'll put this straight pipe on now. about these is uh, the exhaust port is the exhaust is right next to the carburetor so it's kind of hard to get get that curve in there you can't turn it really you know with this you can't turn it I don't know. We'll see. Let's find it out. I'm just hand tightening this. Yeah, see, I'm not going to be able to... I'm not going to be able to get that on there. I'm going to have to take that carburetor off. Because this damn thing's in the way. Great. Do I need him? Alright, 
remember it. You can never get in there with a socket. to get this back on with this pipe. So this has been sitting I th uh, this has been sitting a, a year. And I bought it last year. Got the engine running. Actually, I don't have to take this carburetor off, I don't think. We'll see. Um, what was I saying? Bought it last year, got this engine running, and put it in, put it in the tractor, and it wouldn't stay running. Probably just needed a carburetor adjustment or something, but I thought I did all that, and I thought it was okay, but apparently it was not. So. I don't really want to put this pipe in there that tight because man I'm telling you everybody knows how hard it is to get one of these damn pipes out of here and I don't have a one of those nuts that you put on so I know I'm trying to take shortcuts here and not take everything all apart. people I'll show you this uh, hillbilly air cleaner best I can well I'm letting well I'm letting this thing here cool down and I might show and tell some other stuff too anyway. <laughs> so Hopefully the camera's picking that up. Just drilled a hole, got myself a couple of screws and nuts. They go through that nut. Those nuts there, or those screws, go through, come out here with a little nut on it, each side. Here's the filament that I'm talking about. I don't, I don't remember where I got these. Some, it's some cleaning. Whoops, here we go. <laughs> Sorry, forgot I had that zoomed in on here. Some cleaning 
something or other. I don't remember what it was, but it had to do with cleaning. But it's like a sponge. And I just cut circles out. Stick them in there. Cool. Punched a bunch of holes in the lid so it can breathe. Anyway, if you ever get an engine, especially like a snowblower engine, them are great replacement engines. Usually they're four horse, so, but it's better, you know, it's better than pushing a tractor around. Um, so what I did here is I ground down one edge. Man, it's still hot. You can feel it through this hole. Um, ground down one edge of it because it's going to be on like that and I can't get a wrench in, in between there. So that's originally how thick it was. Had this has this lip all the way around it so you can see how much I ground off. I ground off quite a bit. And I ground off some of this elbow here. Made that a little thinner. Hopefully that'll work. If not, I have to think of something else. Alright. Uh, grab the tripod here. I don't want to take the camera off the tripod. But I'll show you some. Some other good deals. Remember I bought that for 20 or 25 bucks. Here I got four engines here. There's one way in the back. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. It's a, uh, I, if I remember right, it's a Briggs and Stratton, but it's a vertical shaft. Um, I got that one, that one here, this black one there. That's a seven horse, which I originally wanted to put in Abigail here, but. I just couldn't get that thing running right on the bench so and then I got a six horse here and a six horse here and yeah I, I have never even tried these engines more than likely they need carburetor cleaning and maybe points cleaning so I didn't bother at those, but believe it or not, I've got each one of these engines. I think I paid 15 for that seven horse and five bucks each for the other ones. So that. 15, 20, 25, 30 bucks. I got four engines for. You don't pass up a deal like that. And you just hope that you can get them running, right? Hey. So, let me put you back down here. So, that was a pretty good deal, I thought. I got those last year. Well, if I can't get this, if I can't get this thing uh, running in Abigail, I'm gonna pull one of those six horses out and see if I can get one of them running. That'll be probably be a total different video. Yeah, it will be a totally different video. Okay. Let's see. Uh, it's, yeah, it's cooled down now. Cool. 
All right, I'm going to put this together. We'll see in a few. I'm going to pause this thing. All right, everybody. People, I got about 17 minutes left on this tape. I've got gas on, gas in there. Uh, let me show you real quick what I did. Hopefully you can see it. I zip tied the cable here to the oil spout. It seems to be working back and forth. It's decent. So, oh, this here's something I wanted. I'll show you. Um, let me get down to this carburetor. Oh, close. Where is it? There it is. Alright, you see this little thing here? I had to, I had to make that. That's a choke. I had to make that. It works fairly well, so when you do the choke, go all the way up on your throttle, see that, and it hits that and it closes the choke. Now you should be at high idle there, or high throttle there, and then throw throttle, and then off when it hits this wire here. Probably can't see that because I zoom so close in. So let's give it a shot, shall we? Yeah, it's cold. Let me get this thing running. Hey everybody and people, all people. Uh, let me show you what I've done. I actually got this thing going. It ran pretty good, but we'll see if it make me a liar or not. Okay, so I put a uh, this tie here and I found out that uh, I had to put a, a rubber hose here because the thing would ground out <laughs> this cable would ground ground it out and I wasn't getting tra uh, any any spark or anything I'm like what, what the hell's going on I don't know what the hell's going on no well, figured that out this is supposed to be your kill switch, but I had to unplug it because, again, no spark, so I'll just hopefully it turns off when I put the throttle down all the way and it just don't have enough power to keep running. So, uh, I'm going to start it up and uh, hopefully it'll start up for you guys and 
I'll show you this loader. I know there's some of you wondering how this thing works. And uh, the guy I bought it from, Steve, I don't believe he even, he even ever saw this loader work. So, if he hasn't, this one's for Steve. Because he actually messaged Sandra and uh, because she's got a little video and of it and uh, he misses it. Sorry man. Alright, let's give her a shot. And yeah, it's 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 still a little warm. Let me show you some stuff. I got about nine minutes left. Let me show you this thing. It's whoever made this loader was a genius, man. Um, it's crazy how this thing works, you know. So it, it it runs all off the engine, all by belts. So he put a small pulley here on the end of the shaft. Let's see if we can, I don't know if we can see that or not. I don't think so. Let me try to... All right, yeah, he put a small pulley here. Then there's an idler pulley right next to it that, uh, that uh, actually tightens the belt Kind of like, you know, how you, when you do, release the brake and clutch on it, it tightens the belt. Well, but this is the opposite. You push that lever forward and it tightens the belt. <clears throat> then it goes around this big pulley here. Down down there, I don't know if you can see that. See the big pulley down there? And then there's another little tiny, tiny little pulley on that. And that's hidden by the, by part of the frame of the loader. 
and then it uh, then that's on a belt which hooks up to this pulley here this one here and there's also an idler pulley right here right so yeah it's kind of hidden but it's it's right there maybe I'll raise this up I'll raise this up so you can see some more more of it Okay, so there's the idler pulley. Um, that's the lever there. So straight all the way back, like I said, is, is a brake. And what that is, is basically what he did, what this guy did that made this, is if I can find, oh yeah. Sorry for the movement. Uh, all it is, is this rod comes down Let's see. this rod here is connected to that lever comes down it's connected to this engaging pulley I guess you call it but there's also another rod on this whole thing here and that rod comes up here So when you break it, it comes down, and all it is is a piece of belt, a piece of old V-belt he, he made. He just cut, let's see, that's, is that in focus? Let me get you a better angle here, I think, you can see it. Sorry for the movement. Uh, it might be sideways, so. Uh, let me find it here. Right there it is. See it right there? Right there. All that is is a piece of V belt. And he made some type of bracket to put it on. And that's basically what stops this thing from going down. So when it goes down, there's, it's just gravity. The weight of the blade brings it down. And uh, then there's, there's cables here. Let me zoom out. So he's got a spring, a couple of springs, I think there's a couple of springs. All he did was weld them on, on the shaft here. And the cable, he's got a winder down here that winds up the cable. And then it winds up. On the spring here, when it goes down, it winds up, and this unwinds, and winds up here, and when you lift it up, it unwinds here, and winds up down here. And then there's like a little break, or tension thing there. And it's not welded on the tractor. Believe it or not, it's not welded. It's all bolted. So, um, the guy that, the guy that built this thing was, uh, I don't know, man, he was, if you ask me, he was a genius to build all, to build something like that, and just all the thinking it had to take, and I don't know, anyway, I've got two minutes left, I'm going to end this video here, um, I hope you enjoyed it. 
Now we have two 64 custom 600s that are going to go to the shows. And that one right there, the custom 10XL, is getting put back in the garage and replaced with this. Awesome. See you later, guys, people. Yeah.